In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a cityscape with one point perspective from a normal viewpoint. I'm going to use my clear ruler again. I like this one a lot better than the wooden ones just because I can really see what I'm doing. I've got a sharp pencil with a good eraser on it. For a normal view, your horizon line is going to be closer to the middle of the paper or maybe a little low on the paper. All right, I'm going to put mine about maybe a third of the way up, maybe a little bit past that. And make sure that your horizon line is truly horizontal. All right, it's going straight back and forth. Hold your ruler with your fingers spread out so that it doesn't wobble and make your line. Now this line needs to be kind of light so that you can erase parts of it later. So hopefully you can see that on the video. I, I made it maybe a little darker than you'd have to, um, but you'll see what I mean in a moment. Now remember, the horizon line is the same as your eye level. So think about that. Think about how tall you are or where the viewer is as you draw this. If I'm say, let's say I am standing on the sidewalk. I'm going to make a vanishing point. You can put the vanishing point really anywhere, but it probably makes sense to put it somewhere near the middle of the page. Let's go off to the side just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to make this picture as if I'm standing on the sidewalk. And that means the sidewalk is going to be kind of fat at the bottom. The triangle that makes the sidewalk is actually going to feel like a road would look like from the air. Okay, trust me on this. Now next to the sidewalk is going to be a road. There's going to be a road right here. And this road has got a little area. I'm going to put a little area of like green grass that's between the sidewalk and the road. And then I'm going to put the side of the road. Now it's going to be way over here. The, um, the street or the road is going to seem rather wide to us. It almost looks like a road with a line down the middle. But it is not. All right. Maybe I should have made that a little wider, but I'm just going to go with it. Now down the middle of this, I'm going to put my dotted line. And sometimes a road has a solid line. Now the dotted line should be really small, close together dots back here. And as they get closer to us, they get longer and more spread out. That makes it seem like they're going into the distance because they're getting smaller and closer together. Now with a sidewalk, you've got the little um, seams in the sidewalk concrete. They need to be exactly horizontal. A very common mistake is making those lines slanted one way or the other. To help you, you can line up your ruler with the original horizon line or with the edge of the paper, which should be a horizontal line. And then just slide your ruler up and down as you make these lines. Now, I'm going to start at the top because, again, the lines in the sidewalk far away from me, they're going to be very close together. At first, they're almost going to seem like one solid bunch of lines. And then as I go down, I can increase the distance between these lines little by little. Check your ruler and make sure that you're not letting it tip one way or the other. And mine started, I felt like mine started to tip a little bit, so I'm adjusting it. And as you bring this down, you do the same thing if you were doing like a train track. You can kind of tell. Um, now that I get closer to the bottom and I got my lines a little farther apart, you can see what I'm talking about. So each of these lines going down, like the cracks in the sidewalk, look how much space is between these as opposed to these way down here. Okay, so now, in my city, I'm going to make some buildings and I'm going to make some trees. Let's say, ooh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make some trees planted in this little grassy area. That's a rather narrow grassy area, but I'm just going to make it work. I'm going to um, pretend that when they built this road, that they put trees all down the line. And that the trees probably grew to be close to the same height as each other. And they're all taller than me, so the tops of the trees are going to go along a line right up here. Now this line, most of it's going to get erased. Most of it. So I don't need to make it very dark. And I'm going to make my first tree growing right here. So I'm putting a little tuft of grass. And I, it's going to be kind of, um, oh, I don't know, let's, let's make it kind of a skinny tree. It's going to get up here. It's going to be a rather slender tree. And up here, let's make it branch out a little bit. And then at the top, I'm going to put some little kind of uh, squiggly lines. That's where the tree leaves stop growing. At the top of the tree, kind of looks like a little truffle tree or something. Now the tree is not perfectly straight, but overall it should be going straight up. Don't let it be like leaning like this. You really want to try to make it straight up and down or close to it. This one's pretty close. I feel like it might be leaning a tiny bit. The place where the tree is, you can't see through because trees are not clear. So I can erase those areas. 
So here's my first little tree. Let's say there was another tree planted. Oh, you know what? We could make them planted where each of the cracks are, or maybe every other crack, every other seam, because we already have lines there that'll help us space them out. Let's do every other one. So I'm gonna skip this one, and right here I'm gonna put some grass, and that is where the next tree is growing straight up or close to straight up and do, 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 do the other side of it let's make it split off into a little y and it is a lot of it's going to be overlapped by the first tree but its branches and leaves should be kind of smaller like the little raggedy edges the little raggedy edges might be smaller lines than the other one because it's a little farther away and as i do this i can erase any lines that would be blocked by the tree's trunk and I can start erasing these little guidelines. Notice how I overlapped that line a little bit because trees don't really grow as a square. They, they are not gonna obey and like stay in this little territory. I'm just using this as a rough guideline to say this tree appears this tall because it's that much farther back towards the horizon. Okay, I'm gonna skip a line. Let's put a tree right here. The little grasses where it's growing are even smaller. Look how much bigger these grass blades are compared to those because that's far away now, pretty far. And this tree is probably going to be a little skinnier than the other ones because it is farther away from me. And it's going to have this little place where the branches branch out. And I'm going to see some of the leaves that might overlap. Maybe I see through the other tree, you know, on the other side, and I can see that some of the leaves are there. Now I can keep doing this all the way back. And my eraser is a little fatter than the tree at this point, but I can do this all the way back until they become teeny tiny like little pieces of broccoli. I don't think I will. Maybe let's make one more tree and then we'll imagine they stopped planting these trees. Maybe they only planted four. So I'm going to skip a line and go here. This is where my last one is growing. It's growing pretty much straight up. Maybe a little wobble here and there because trees are not perfect. And there's its little bushy top. So now what I have is a row of trees going towards my vanishing point. So this is a good example of using linear perspective with an organic shape because trees are organic items. They don't have super straight lines. They don't have perfectly geometric edges. They aren't square or rectangle. They are irregular. Their edges of the leaves are going to be all different. They're irregular. Okay. And as I were to color them, I maybe would make the ones farther away more faint and have less detail like we talked about when we did... Um, atmospheric perspective okay so there's my trees big medium smaller smallest let's do some buildings I'm gonna put the buildings over here because there's more room and hopefully it will make sense um, so the the first thing I want to do is draw the the part of the building that is facing me so this building is gonna have a an edge right here and I'm gonna have it just right up to the edge of the road just to make it simple most buildings would have some like grassy area or like another sidewalk but I'm just gonna make it up to the edge of the road to make it kind of simple this is a corner of the building and is the corner closest to me now at the bottom of this corner I go straight over and at the top of that corner I also go straight over and these lines need to be horizontal and that line needs to be vertical so this could be the front of the building let's say there's like a door here um, you know I maybe could have used my ruler to put a door right here the, notice that the door is higher than the eye level because my eyes would be about right there when I go to that door, right? Because I'm a, I'm a grown person. I'm not a super tall person, but I'm not taller than that door. So it makes sense that the door would be this size when the, when the building is this close to me. And maybe there is a window, there's like a second floor, and this is the second story window. I maybe should have used a ruler on all those lines, but I'm just, some of, sometimes on the shorter, smaller um, shapes, I will not use a ruler. Now, this doesn't look very three-dimensional right now. It looks very like a block. So what we need to do is make it look like this building has another side that's going in the distance. Well, the way we do that is by connecting the corners to the vanishing point. The reason I made this corner on the road is there's already a line right now that is connecting that corner to the vanishing point, and it is the edge of the road. So this line is already going the right direction. So now I just need to make a line over here going to the vanishing point. I check this corner, I check this dot, which is the vanishing point, and make sure they are lined up, and I'm going to draw a line. Now I have to stop here because even if we can see part of the side of this building, it's gonna go behind this tree. So if you wanted to, you could draw on top of the tree, but I'm just gonna have to erase it later. So 
you know, if there's little gaps between the branches and I know I'm going to have a lot more buildings, I could go ahead and draw that, but I am going to mostly focus on the line here and I know it's going behind the trees. Now this is not an everlasting building going forever into infinity, so I need to decide where is the edge of this building. Not the front of the building, but the side. So I'm going to start at this corner. I'm going to make sure my ruler is perfectly up and down, vertical, and I'm going to scooch it over until I feel like I'm at the edge of the building. And you can decide, because you're making this picture, how far back it goes. Like, okay, how about right there? Notice that my ruler is straight up and down. It's not going like that. Don't do that. That wouldn't be right. That wouldn't make a very square building. Don't do it this way either. But most people will make this mistake, and they make this line lean. It needs to be vertical. So line that up, and you connect this line with this line. Now you might start to see this if I darken this line up, because we're keeping that, we're keeping that. We can erase this because we cannot see the horizon through the building. It's not totally made of glass. That's the side of the building that's over here kind of going away from me. This is the side of the building facing me. So I can tell this building is like a basically a big box. If I wanted to make another building, maybe it's the same size of this building, but it's just a little further along, I will start by making another corner. I'm going to put it about right here. This line, again, should be directly up and down. It should be a vertical line. Now, just like before, remember how I made this line go over to the edge and this line had to be horizontal? I am going to do the same thing right here, connecting this corner. And I'm not really connecting it to anything. I'm just going this direction until it disappears behind the building that I already drew. I have to stop there because there's a building here. I know this might be confusing, but I'm trying to make it clear. Again, at the top of this corner, I'm gonna make a line going straight over. Now what I have done is I have made the part of this building that's facing me. I can erase this line because it is just a guideline. And I can also erase this line because I cannot see the horizon through the building. If this building has a door, it's gonna be a little bit shorter than the building's door from the, the previous building because this um, building's farther away from me. So maybe it's the same type of building. It's right there. Now I have to decide where the back corner of the building is. So I'm gonna go about right here and I'm gonna connect this to the top, although the tree is in the way a little bit. So if I could see through that, there would be a line kind of looking like that. I just made a little dotted line. I can erase the horizon line right here because I can't see through the building. And I'm gonna shore up this line because we're keeping that. I think two buildings is enough for right now, but it looks like these two buildings in a row are going in the distance because these lines are going towards the horizon line. But remember, these lines are not because that front of the building is directly facing me. Um, if I were to do the windows, let me show you how to do that. I think I did this in the other video a little bit, but um, let, me, let me try it again. So let's say there is a window just like this on this wall. It's gonna actually end up looking more like a parallelogram rather than a rectangle like this one. But if it's in the same spot, I wanna make sure it's corresponding. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look at the top of the window, and I'm gonna go over here to the corner of the building. And I'm gonna do that to the bottom of the window too. It should be a horizontal line. And I just made two little dots here and here. This line can go away. But that, these two dots are gonna to connect to the horizon line. Like this. And then I'm gonna pivot that and I'm going to go to this one. Now you'll notice I went ahead and extended that into the second building because that window could be in the same spot as that window. That means I actually put this window in the wrong spot, I think. I think I should move that window up, you guys. I'm going to do that. The place where that should be is if I took this and went straight over and took this and went straight over. So that should be the bottom. That should be the top. That's the side. That's the side. There's the crossbar and there's where the new window is. Sorry if that was complicated, but it probably would have looked fine if I left the, the window the way it was, but you know, I wanna make it right. Um, now, this is another really important thing. These lines represent where the top and bottom of each window is gonna be, but the sides of the window have to be straight up and down. So let's put a straight up and down line connecting those. That's the farther away edge, and I'm gonna do the other edge of the window right here, like that. Now, if there's a cross beam, like in these other windows, it also needs to be vertical. It has to be vertical. And then this little beam right here, it should go to the vanishing point. Something like that. Da, 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 da. Let's go ahead and put one over there for that window, because I'm gonna put a window here. This line should be straight up and down. This line should be straight up and down. The little line in the middle should be straight up and down. This line, this line, and this line. Follow those little guidelines I just did 
that go to the vanishing point. So, so far, I've got a little start to my normal view, my normal view cityscape. And you could do more, you could put more windows, you could put some different things on the roof, you could put some sidewalks, you could put mountains in the background like this. Do -do -do. Oh look, there's some mountains back there. I don't know. Um, you could put hills in the background, maybe there's some hills. The background doesn't have to be a straight flat line. Um, over here, let's say there were there was a fence. Let's put a fence. I want a line for the bottom of the fence. Let's put it here. And a line for the top of the fence. Well, do you think the top of the fence is taller than me or shorter than me? I think the top of the fence is probably a little shorter than me. I don't think it's made to um, keep people. I think it's more like a, a, a horse fence. You know what I mean? Like it's not super tall. So that means the top of the fence can be down here like that. Now, the little pieces of the fence that hold it together, the beams, they have to be straight up and down. They're kind of like these lines on the sidewalk, except instead of being flat horizontal, they are vertical. Okay, so just like these, the ones way back here, they're gonna be pretty close together. Making sure my, pen, my um, ruler is exactly up and down, I'm gonna start putting some beams. And then as I get closer to the edge of the paper, the beams can be a little bit further apart, a little bit further apart, a little bit further apart. Like that okay so that could be my fence I feel like there should be another beam in the middle of the fence or maybe two I feel like I feel like this is the ground you know where the little wooden beams are and it has like these wooden beams I feel like one should be right here let's do that let's put it right here and um, let's make them thicker you know like it's made of wood it's like a, a log or something I don't know what they make them out of And then each of these goes like that. Really, that bottom line, that's not really like a piece of the fence. That's just where the where the fence posts were um, built and kind of put into the ground, you know? I'm just making these a little thicker is all. Okay, so that's basically my little fence. And then maybe instead of a line being here, maybe there's like a shadow in the grass. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can see grass here, but as you go back, the grass is like tinier, you know, like the, the long grass isn't so long. Um, I feel like this is really narrow, like it should be bigger. But I can adjust that. And maybe there's a shadow on the bottom, maybe it's a little darker down here. Okay, so there's a little fence. And then lastly, I don't think I really want anything up here. I think I'm just gonna put some more um, like hills and some mountains like really far away. You could use some atmospheric perspective back there. So you've got your linear perspective here with the buildings and the road and the sidewalk and the fence and even the trees, even though they're organic. And then back here, you could use some atmospheric perspective where like, oh, there's some really, really far away mountains in there, like super duper faded. And then these ones nearer to us are a little more detailed. Maybe there's a sun up here. Maybe there's some clouds. You can decide. So that's your normal view.